Okay, in this webinar, we're going to discuss the effective labor rate in the project management and accounting module. My name is Rob Fitzpatrick. I'm a senior AX D365 solution architect for Western Computer. And what we're going to do is explore the use of effective labor rate to capture the true costs associated with your salaried employees when they charge time to your projects. And then we're going to go through the entire setup of how you turn on the functionality for the worker in the system and then transactionally what it does in the system when time is charged to your projects. So we'll take a look, obviously, in the, in the system. I'll show you how to set it up on the employee and make sure everything is set up and configured properly. Uh, I'll show you what the math is going to be like to show you the difference of effective labor rate when it's turned on versus when it's turned off. And we'll go through an entire demo. So what is effective labor rate? So it's the ability to post the proper cost on your projects for salaried employees. AX and D365 have the ability to assign an hourly cost price to your workers. Now, not everyone who works for you is an hourly employee. You can have salaried people who charge your projects. From an hourly perspective, an hourly cost price works out great. So they will charge that same cost price to your project regardless of how many hours they work because they're hourly. That's how they're going to get paid. For salaried employees, they get paid the same amount no matter how many hours they work. So they could work 60 hours in a week, they're going to get their salary. If they work 20 hours that week, they're going to get their salary. So the cost associated with the amount of hours that they work should fluctuate based on the amount of time that they charge in the system for that particular week. So it's a way to basically inflate or deflate the cost price for your salaried employees and so that their proper salaried cost hits weekly or whatever time period you're using to your projects. So there's a little bit of setup involved. The first setup is on the worker itself. You're going to head out to the worker underneath your project setup, select the use effective labor rate option on the worker. So that's going to activate the functionality on the worker. Now, this is set up worker by worker because it is specific to which workers are salaried versus which workers are hourly. The next step is a rather important one, and this one sometimes gets overlooked. And it will result in it not the functionality simply not working. So out on that same worker in the employment area, you need to set up a calendar for that worker for the employment. And this is the calendar by which you're determining what is the standard number of hours in a week that they should be working. So I have a calendar set up in our examples of 40 hour work week. This is the way that the system will figure out all right, how many hours should they work. And then based on how many hours do they work, what I should do with the cost rate. And finally, the last piece of setup is you would have to assign your worker a cost price in the system. Now, once you do that first step and you activate that use effective labor rate checkbox, you're going to see that the cost price has the effective labor rate checkbox checked as well. So it's another indicator to the system that it says we're going to use effective labor rate on this worker. And then just a note about how this math is really going to work. So I wrote up an example here. If an employee is making $52,000 a year, it equates to an hourly rate of $25 per hour based on a 40-hour work week. So regardless of how many hours per week they put in, they're only going to bring home that $1,600 per week. It's always going to be the same because they're salaried. So if they charge 32 hours in a week, the system will calculate an hourly cost price of $50 per hour to get you to that $1,600. So it's going to properly cost out what that salary is and spread it over the hours that they did charge. And conversely, if they work more than 50 hours in a week, it will compress the rate. So it'll calculate, let's say, if they work 50 hours in a week, the system's going to calculate $32 per hour that they've worked and spread that across the hours that they work on your projects. That's basically what the system is doing with the math. It's either going to increase or decrease their cost rate depending on how many hours over their standard calendar or under their standard calendar they charge to in the week. So I'll head out to the system and show you that. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do here is head out to our worker and set him up for effective labor rate. So I'm going to use this first worker under project, project setup. I'm going to edit him and I'm going to turn on that flag. Second thing we're going to do is under employment, make sure we have that standard calendar set. So he's already got this standard calendar set. Again, this is a very important piece. This is the calendar the system will use 
to determine the calculation for effective labor rate. You'll notice when I went over to project and project setup, there's another calendar here. There's two, actually two calendars, a max hours calendar and a resource scheduling calendar used for different purposes. So there's multiple calendars that you can set up on a worker, and this is the one under the employment tab that is specific to effective labor rate. So that's important to remember. And then finally, in the project management and accounting module, we need to set up a cost price for him, cost price hour. So I'll create a new record here. I will look for, there he is. Notice how that checkbox gets checked automatically now because I have that option checked on his worker record. The effective labor rate will come in and be checked. And I'll give him a cost price of $25. And then let's fill out some time. Let's fill out a timesheet. So I'll create one for Aaron. All right, and I'll throw in, let's go over. Let's work 50 hours this week. And we'll wait for that to go through workflow. Okay, so the timesheet has gone through workflow. It's been posted. Now let's take a look at the hours transactions. And we'll come over here and we'll say, okay, based on, I put their cost price of $25 per hour into there. And the system, because I charged over the standard hours, I charged 50 hours on my timesheet. It's now compressed his cost price so that the cost posted for this timesheet is going to be equal to what his standard work week cost would be. And so that's the example of charging over 40 hours. And the system conversely will do the same thing when I charge less than that. So let's just take a quick look at a timesheet where I charge less than 40 hours. So I'll create another one. I'll push this forward to next week. And I'll charge seven hours a day. And let's push this through workflow. Okay, the timesheet's out of workflow. It's been posted. And let's take a look now. So now the cost price being that I charged less than 40 hours it's going to inflate that cost price on my projects so that my weekly cost is equal to what my salaried cost is actually going to be and it inflates the cost price so there you have it pretty powerful tool to make sure that the cost of those salaried employees gets properly recorded to your projects as they charge time so that's the extent of the functionality thank you very much and just let us know if you have any questions out there please send them on in. We'll be happy to answer those questions, send them back out to you, or put together another video, post it on our site. Thanks again. Bye.